Hey guys, welcome back. I've got a tutorial here for the best OBS version 29 recording and Sony Vegas render settings for low end PCs for 1080p 60fps gameplay recordings for YouTube. Okay, let's get into the settings right away. For OBS uh, version 29, they've changed a lot of things. Uh, first off, I'm using a GTX 770 as my GPU. So it's kind of a dated video card. I don't have a 3K or 4K series card. Um, I'm gonna say my OBS settings, 99% of them are all defaults. So I'm only gonna go to the tabs that you need to know about. We're gonna go straight to the output tab uh, and we're gonna go to the recording section. At the top here, if it's set to simple, set it to advanced. Uh, your recording pathway, um, make sure you set it to wherever you want um, your video to be outputted to. So like a big hard drive. Uh, your recording format set to mp4 your audio track i only have one selected so if you have multiple devices um, make sure you have that set up your encoder if you're using an amd video card i do not know the settings for those so i'm sorry about that but if you're using an nvidia make sure you have the nvenc uh, h.264 codec um, and we're going to come down here to the actual core settings here for the encoder set it to cbr I have mine set to 20,000 uh, kilobits per second for the bitrate. You can set this to 15, but you'll have to play around with this uh, to see which one you like. Uh, the higher bitrate, the higher file size you're going to have, so you definitely have to gonna watch out for that. Uh, keyframe interval set to 2. Your preset is another uh, setting that they've changed in OBS during, for version 29. Basically, I'll try to explain this. The higher preset setting you have, the more resources your PC is going to use. So if you have a high-end PC, I would suggest maybe trying to use five or six. Um, if you have a low-budget PC like I do, try medium three, uh, four or three. Uh, but I find medium works really well. Let's give you that nice, crisp, clean recording and without taxing your PC too much. Your tuning, always have it on high quality. Uh, Multi-pass mode is going to be another uh, whether or not your PC can handle it or not. If you have a high-end PC, I hear two-pass is actually worth it. Kind of gives you that extra uh, quality. Uh, if you have a low-end PC, single-pass is just fine. Um, but the two uh, quarter resolution two-pass is kind of like the middle ground, so you can play around with this setting. I have it on single-pass because that's all I can afford to do. Prof uh, profile set to high. Look, uh, look ahead, make sure this is disabled. Uh, this is going to, if you have it enabled, it's going to dynamically switch your B-frames. So it's going to constantly switch them up as you're recording, which is going to be a variable in your recording. If you uncheck this, your B-frames down here at the bottom with your max B-frames will be set to two, which is a constant, which is going to be a more stable, um, you know, uh, op or option for you to have, if, especially if you're having issues with stuttering and stuff. It's going to be one thing that you don't have to worry about. A psycho visual tuning, make sure this is checked on because this is going to help you greatly. It's going to tax your GPU a little bit more uh, with the encoding, but it's going to help with high movement situations and like FPS games and stuff like that. It's definitely worth turning this on for your recordings. So that's basically it for your encoder settings. Uh, for the audio, I have mine set on my one track to 192. Some say to set it at 320. Um, it doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone said it doesn't make a difference either way. Um, down here in your audio tab, we're gonna switch over here. Your general, make sure your sample rate is set to whatever your PC is actually putting out. So some have their PC set to default at 41K, some at 48K. Just make sure you find out whatever your PC is at, settings at in your sound recording settings uh, and set it to there. Um, your video uh, tab over here, you want your base canvas to be whatever your main monitor is. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is mine. You want your output scale set to that as well. And then of course you want your FPS uh, value set to 60. Now if you're doing desktop recordings like, like this, 30 FPS is totally fine. Uh, no one's gonna notice a difference. Um, and if you wanted to, let's say for some reason, output or rescale this to a 720p stream, just come down here in the output section and set this to 720p. And then down here in the downscale filter, you'll either have two options that I would want, to, want you to play with. 
it's the 36 sample option and the 16 uh, sample option. Try the 32. If you're still having issues, switch it to 16. Um, by cubic, I think it's a 16. And see if that helps. Uh, it should still be at a decent quality, but it should help you on resources. Uh, hot keys, I don't like to go with that. Uh, and then the advanced section, we're gonna go to the general tab up here at the top. Uh, processing priority. This is gonna see, this is gonna tell your computer how much of a priority you want OBS to be used, right? So if you set this to like above normal or high, your PC is going to manage this program as being the one thing it needs to focus on, the one thing it needs to use all your resources to use. This is a double-edged sword setting. Uh, if you use too much of the priority, process priority uh, with your PC, you could actually see um, degradation in your recordings uh, from resource loss because it's taking away resources from your actual game that you're playing and putting them all on OBS. I find above normal or normal to be a balanced setting, uh, especially if you have a higher end PC, above normal is totally fine. If you have a low budget PC um, like mine, I have it set to normal and it's kind of the middle ground, uh, the medium setting. And it seems to be working out really well. Your video tab down here, do not change any of this. This is all perfectly fine. And that'll be it for OBS uh, settings. So we're gonna go down into Vegas here real quick. Now, to get um, your 1080p video uploaded to YouTube, YouTube does something kind of funky. Your 1080p high quality recording is going to be compressed after it's uploaded to YouTube on a different codec. And then your video may come out perfect on your render and when you play it on your PC, but when you play it in YouTube, it may look pixelated and grainy. Well, that's because YouTube uses a weird codec for 1080p videos nowadays. Um, and so the workaround to get your piece or to get your video to look crystal clear like it was in your recording is to, to render out your video in 1440p. This will force YouTube to use a different codec, a higher quality codec on your 1080p video and force it uh, to actually look really well. So to do that, um, we're going to come up here to the project properties on uh, this is just a video I have that I've already posted to my channel, but um, come over here to uh, I'm just going to show you my settings for the project properties. You want this set to 1920 by 1080. You want this set the frame rate to 59.94. You want your uh, pixel format to be 8. You want your full uh, screen resolution render quality uh, set to best. You want your motion blur set to Gaussian. And you want to uh, de interlace mode set none. And then your resample mode, uh, disable resample. Uh, having re a sample apparently messes with the quality. Sometimes, though, when you drag and drop your video or your recording into Sony Vegas, the de uh, disable resample doesn't apply. So to do this, you'll want to click on the actual video part of your um, recording and then right click it and then go to switches and then make sure to down here at the bottom, disable resample. And that, that'll make sure that it's disabled. Now we're gonna go over here to the render settings and we're gonna click off this one and then we're going to go in here you want to pick the Magix AVC slash AAC MP4. And then you want to come over here on the side and you want to pick the Internet HD 59.9 FPS. I don't really know if there's a difference between just the FPS version or the InVink, but if you're using an InVink encoder, I would definitely just pick the InVink. But we're going to go down here and we're going to customize the template. And this is what it's going to look like. Like I said, it's 1080p 60 FPS 1440p render. Now you're going to come down here to the file size or file or frame size, sorry, excuse me, uh, and make a custom frame size at 2560 by 1440. You want to set the profile to main. You want to set the frame rate to 59.94. Uh, no progressive scan. 
you want to come down here to the variable bitrate and set it to 24, uh, 240 million. And your average bitrate, um, you want it set to 135 million. Your number of slices, you can't really change, so don't worry about that. Uh, your encoder mode, make sure it's the NV encoder. You want your preset set to high quality, and then you want your RC mode set to VBR high quality. And then your audio settings, just make sure that your sample bit or sample rate is set to whatever your PC is at, at either 4100 or 48K. Your bit rate, like I said, doesn't really matter. I have mine set at 192, but I'm rendering out at 320. Doesn't, just keep it whatever it is. Uh, your system settings don't change anything here. And then your project settings, you definitely want to go to change your video render quality to best down here in the tab. And then make sure you don't change the other ones, the 3D mode and the color space. Just leave as default. And that is going to be basically your your um, uh, your settings for OBS and for Sony Vegas for your higher quality render settings. This will force um, when you render this out, it will have a larger file size, so you have to watch out for that. Um, even though you're recording at 1080p and your file size doesn't look that big, but if you render it out to 1440p, you're probably going to see like a double in size on your files. So make sure you have the space when you before you do this. Um, but when you do render this out and then you take the, the render and you post it up to YouTube, it will then pump it up there to the 1440p options and give you the higher quality recording so you won't have that pixelation and blurriness that uh, seems to be happening with just normal 1080p uploads. So I hope that helps you and thanks for watching.